The Alzheimer's Association says roughly 84,000 caregivers in the state provide help for someone with a form of dementia. I spoke with one of them living in Henderson. He shares his journey with the world on Instagram and TikTok, reaching several million people who may need a laugh, a good cry, or some encouragement to get them through their day. Hello, Grandma. If life is measured in moments. <laughs> the laugh is the best part. <laughs> Chris Puncelon tries to capture them all. I've been obsessed with documenting because my dad had a, had a camcorder glued to his hand for my entire childhood. So it made sense to chronicle life with grandma, Anisia Manapon, after like rheumatoid arthritis led him to become uh, her full-time caregiver. One day, all of a sudden, my grandmother wakes up and is no longer able to get out of bed. Um, she, she can't move her hands, she can't move her legs. Good job, Grandma! At this time, I only had a semester left of college. I didn't have any opportunities lined up, so I was like, I'll take on the responsibility. That was nearly a decade ago. The adventure rolling along. Make your head strong. Each day brings something different. I love you. Some fun. Serrano. <laughs> <laughs> Others a little more challenging. Oh, grandma. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry. Especially as her dementia progresses. But the two growing closer each and every day. <laughs> my grandmother is actually funnier than I ever imagined. It's also a chance for those following along to get an inside look at what it takes to be a full-time caregiver. And we just do it like that. Giving hope and guidance to those at different stages of their own journey and letting them know it's okay to feel exactly how they feel. Was there ever a moment where you said, mom, dad, maybe we find somebody else? Uh, there was never a moment of that, of, of saying that I want to throw the towel in and have somebody else do it, but there were a lot of moments of doubt and frustration and, and anger of why is this happening to me? And, and at the time, it felt like I was the only one in the world taking care of a, of a loved one. But slowly, I started to realize what a blessing it was and how much I've learned through this journey and, and how many how much I was able to inspire the world through my grandmother's story. A story that started in the Philippines with Manapan serving as a teacher before immigrating to the U.S. and raising a family. And I'll signal to her to put her lips together. Good job, Grandma. One November day, at 97, it all changed. A cough turned into a diagnosis of COVID-19 and RSV. She was in the hospital for four days, and on the third day, she was scheduled to go home. Um, and uh, and then I got the phone call that gram my grandma unfortunately passed away. More than eight years of spending all that time together had come to an end. Grief and gratitude coming in waves. In the sadness, I see the love. Without the love, there would be no sadness. The videos, like this one, also provide comfort. After showing her his new tattoo, she expresses her love and acceptance. It's really hard to grasp a grandmother's love for her grandson. Um, and even in the moment when hearing those words, like I'm hearing them and I, and I love hearing it. <laughs> but it's not until I play it back and watch my grandmother's eyes and the sparkle that she has when she sees me that I really truly feel the love of my grandmother. Every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks in between, showers, everything. I don't think I would have done any of that if I wasn't her full-time caregiver. So what a, what a blessing and what a gift it was to be able to, to have those memories and to spend that time I did with my grandmother. grandma, okay? It's something he'll never forget. And what an outlook, right, on life. Um, one of the things he said about his grandmother, that she was so grateful for everything, and that was the one thing that she carried with her day in and day out, always saying thank you and remembering the people who were around her, helping her. And even on his part, I mean, being a caregiver is so demanding financially, emotionally, physically. So for him to agree to do this at when he was just in his 20s, right, that yeah. takes such a big person. Yeah, a, a, year, a semester left of college when he said yes, he was going to do this. And then 
eight years, more than eight years later, and, and was still doing it. So yeah. Um, so a lot of people might be wondering what's next for him. Well, he says he plans to continue documenting his life, saying that he now feels a sense of responsibility for the platform he's been given. So he's looking to empower people with ways to become strong, independent, and healthy until the end of their lives. And you can find him on Instagram at Chris Puncelon and on TikTok at First Name Chris.